Scientists believe they may have detected gravitational waves caused by a black hole gobbling up a dead star. So what does this all mean for us? To discuss this week's Space News, I'm joined by the ANU's Brad Tucker. Brad, good afternoon. What does this mean and where is the dead star now? So it's a dead star that you probably don't want to be on. So this is a, an event that happened 900 million light years away. So 900 million years ago, this thing actually happened, but only hit the Earth last week. Um, and so a black hole is a, a massive object, but this black hole is actually quite small. And it looks like we detected what's called a neutron star. So this is kind of the remnant core of a dead star. And it appears that the black hole literally swallowed this neutron star. And this would have produced a gravitational wave. So we've seen black holes collide and actually felt the ripples hit the Earth. This appears that we felt a very small whip ripple last Wednesday, so if maybe last Wednesday felt off, it probably wasn't this, but it could have been this. Uh, and this would have hit the Earth and actually caused the Earth to slightly move from this massive event 900 million years ago. Yeah, interesting. Okay, moving on. Russia has launched a robot into space. Yeah, so robots are actually becoming more and more common. And the reason being is on International Space Station, there's kind of two reasons you want to use a robot. One, uh, and so in this case, this Russian robot Fedor was actually used to test a new version of the Soyuz capsule. So it kind of had sensors to test vibrations, uh, instrument failure, and the way up to make sure that the new Soyuz capsule that Russia's developing is safe for astronauts. But once they get to the space station, they're used for some of the more arduous tasks that maybe are a bit more harmful or risky but that actually a humanoid robot can do. So this isn't the first robot. Uh, both the US and Japan have also sent robots to it. Uh, and so it's kind of a way of the future that in some of the tasks of space, as it becomes harder, there's more risk to radiation. You don't want to put astronauts in that line of work, so you want to put robots in that line of work. So Fedora, though, is also a better name than uh, the US version, which was Robonaut. So kind of a, a throwback to RoboCop. I was going to ask you what the names were, so I'm glad you've answered that. Uh, finally. Yes, yeah, so, so, yeah, some of the names are uh, better than others, let's yeah. say that. Um, but, you know, Fedora is, a, is a, an acronym, I guess, but it's kind of a know that real humanoid things are going to start taking these jobs. Mm, yeah, exactly right. Uh, finally, we've found some new planets. Yeah, so, you know, last week we actually saw the discovery of some nearby habitable planets, and that has now just been superseded. So it appears that a nearby star, which is actually only 12 light years away, so this is really in the neighbor of our neighborhood, um, what we found are three planets close to that star. So when we look at our solar system, we have these rocky planets near our sun, uh, and we found three rocky Earth-like planets, one to one and a half times the mass of our Earth, really close to a neighboring star, so close that it orbits three to 13 days. So every year is only 13 days long. But one of these planets happens to be in its habitable zone, the zone where you could host liquid water. And so it appears to be that what we're finding is a bunch of these stars, even though it's unlikely, it actually is very likely now that they actually host habitable planets. So it just appears that every week, more and more planets that could host life are being found and our universe gets a bit smaller. Very, very interesting. Brad Tucker, thank you so much. Thanks.